Just get started. Okay. Go. Welcome to Better Yourself Podcast, your boyfriend, Chris. And today, as promised, I have a special guest. I have Cheryl. She's actually from Birmingham, but I believe she's actually moving to Africa right now. And we actually going to talk about Africa because she's a businesswoman. She's she's an entrepreneur as well. She's she's also a multi multi award winning. And we're going to talk about her show that she's actually doing, you know, regarding to Africa, building Africa together, connecting the British diaspora as well. She talked a lot about Africa. So I'm just like, the reason why I wanted to have her on the show today, just because I was really passionate about, I'm passionate about everybody that live in Europe, actually trying to find a way to go to Africa because a lot of people always have like such a bad image of Africa. So we need more people like her who actually give Africa the, the image that you actually deserve. So welcome to Better Yourself Podcast. As I always say to all my guests, just introduce yourself and let us know who you are. Hi there. Thank you for having me. I'm, my name's Cheryl Fuller. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to say I live in Birmingham, UK. Sorry, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I say that, yeah, unfortunately, because I'm not too keen on the cold weather and things like that. Um, yeah, I'm a mom. I'm a mom of two children. Um, and I live, as I said, in the UK for now. <laughs> so, um, about yourself, I know you, you live in the UK right now. So, how, yes. I thought you was in Africa already. So, you actually traveling no. a lot in Africa right now or you been to Africa before? Yes, I've been to Africa before and so forth. Um, I'm actually here at the moment. I'm planning, as you know, it's the uh, pandemic. Yeah. So, I am um, putting loads of different things in place because I don't believe in just, um, you know, so everybody's journey is different. But I'm, you know, as you said, I'm into business as well. And, you know, I want to make sure when I'm actually making that transition that we are actually, you know, I'm actually creating jobs. We're actually building together and we've got some infrastructure in there. So have to do things properly. have to make sure I know the place, know yeah. the thing, make sure that, uh, you know, everything's concrete and so forth. But, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm, a, I've got, I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm a mom first, you know, I'm a, I'm a mother first. So um, let's try to go back a little bit. So because okay. when people live in Europe, uh, mm -hmm. are you, where are your origin from? Well, I was born in Birmingham, but yeah. as you know, we are all, all African. Yes. I'm African, okay? But my family, they lived um, in the diaspora. So my mom's side of the family live, um, lived um, in St. Kitts and Nevis. Some people might not have heard of that. It's a smaller Caribbean island. Yeah. Um, they lived there. Um, my mum was actually born in the UK as well because my nan came um, over from there to here with her dad, etc. Um, my dad's side of the family, my dad is actually Jamaican and his mum was actually born in Cuba because her family went to work in Cuba. Yeah. And then my, yeah, so I've got a bit of a mountain pot going on, but you know. I see what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the, the idea of like, the reason why I asked where you come from because for people actually, if you are African, Yes. If you, your parent African, it's easier for you to get that connection, you know, like, yeah. the way from the Caribbean is not as easy because I know, as you say, it's good that you say like we're all African, you know, we're all, right. we all African, but it's not That's a right. lot of people actually who see things that way. Many people from the Caribbean, they're always trying to detach themselves, some of them actually, not everybody, to Africa, but we're always from the same land. So what was like, what make you actually get that connection with Africa first? Well, to be fair, it's probably the household that I was brought up in and how my family are. You know, regardless of us being in the Caribbean, I always knew, I always thought I'm African. Um, so, you know, yes, we are from the diaspora. We live there because of unfortunate circumstances that happened. However, the household that I grew up with, my mum was very in touch with her own roots and so forth. You know, um, my aunties and things we used to have to go to um, Saturday schools to learn about our heritage and so forth. So we just, that's just us, you know what I mean? As I say, we live in the diaspora, but we are just African. Although, as you said, you know, that's a valuable point you've made that some people, you know, feel that a little bit displaced because, you know, sometimes you might go, say, even to the Caribbean and people just call you English. Yeah. You might go to Africa and people call you, you know, foreigner too. So, you yeah. know, and then some people don't know where they, you know, sit, etc. However, myself, you know, I'm not really too fussed about that. I just see myself as African. That's just me. You know, I'm yeah. African Caribbean. You know, well, when it's very yeah. important, it's, it's yeah. easier for people to say I'm black and I'm proud 
yes it's good to say that but i think it's i think it's more powerful when you say i'm african and i'm proud because that's right people hide themselves in that term of black and i'm proud is when you when you go deeper than that if somebody is not is not able to say i'm african and i'm proud i mean like yes. everyone you say black and i'm proud is no is really kind of hypocrite or you just want to because you sound good saying i'm black and i'm proud <laughs> you know yeah. and so you actually working on uh, there's a show that you call let's talk africa why is it for well basically i've got a new i've got a new group on facebook called let's talk africa 2020 and beyond yes that is basically getting a collective of individuals that have got an interest in maybe visiting or if they've got an interest in returning to the motherland um like what you were saying a lot of people um are focusing on the americans the american diaspora returning to the motherland but i've I seen that there was a gap like you know that nobody's really talking about the british diaspora mm. so i decided to make this group so that people can like you know if they can share ideas because you know i'm focusing on ghana because that's where i'm looking to transition but it's not just about ghana it's about the whole continent you know mm. 54 different countries you know there's the, you know people can't say there's nowhere to pick because there's so many so yeah, Africa is places. big because people exactly. get they think like is I mean everyone we say Africa, Africa is not just a country. Yeah. It's like exactly. Is that you going to Europe? You have Spain, France, and other countries. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So you know, so I decided to create that group so that it's a safe haven so that people can talk about what they've been doing, what they've been investing in, um, just what they want to you know what they want to do in the future and so forth, and just share ideas. And then I started a channel. Um, and that's really about documenting my journey, um, you know, the real story. Because I'm not going to jazz it up or jazz it down. I'm going to actually talk the whole truth and nothing but the truth about what's going on, you know, behind the scenes, the glitz, the glamour, and, you know, the mm. ups and downs <laughs> so, and so forth. Um, like Africa, right? So you, you, I know you know about Africa, the story that people tell you. So what was your experience going to Africa for the first time? Because I know... Africa, even if you have parents that, you know, go to Africa, have people yes. that come from Africa, things that they say to you, but when you go to Africa, the experience is, diff is different. So for you, actually, from Birmingham, tell okay. me about, like, the first time when you go to Africa, what was your first reaction like when you got there? Well, I went when I was a very young child with my mom, I, but I went to North Africa. So that was different than, as I would say, mainland Africa, in my yeah. opinion, more black Africa. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anybody that lives in like North Africa. So um, I can give you the two um, contrasts. So when I went to North Africa, because at that time when I went as a child, there wasn't as many black people. It was more like the lighter skin tones and um, mm. African people okay so it seemed as if and as I said I was a small child now I went there with my mom and my godmother and my grandma and my mom's friends and I'll be honest with you the men were a little bit now I'm older I realized well, it seems a bit sleazy towards my mom mm. and my, my godmother they were trying to touch them and things and obviously I was just a small child and things and um, there was a lot of bartering going on and but people were welcoming to us and so mm. forth so that was that that's what i recall as a young child yeah um and then what did i yeah but people, is it like uh, i know as a young you have another view because you that's have, what i'm like, saying exactly life. so what about when um like when you come back like lately you know as okay a, okay as an adult different they're totally different as soon as like um i went to mainland now this is different yeah okay so before we even got off the plane and so forth and different times you just had that vibe because everybody just seemed as if everybody i don't know it was like really weird that you know like when before when you're in london heathrow or so forth or gatwick everybody's rushing and so forth and everybody seems like they're just in this big you know just, yeah, just just just, sure. just in this rush kind of mode but when you're on the plane and so forth people just seem more chilled out and everything but when we landed and so forth even the um um, the cabin crew and everything everybody just seemed happy so when we actually got off people are smiling everybody's like welcome my sister welcome to the children everybody was just proper like really 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 supportive nobody was saying any of the negative like what even people might have said you know in in england and so forth nobody was nothing was like how you seen things were some of the places look better than in the uk to be fair you know yeah. what i mean it, you know developed um things were you know pe people were people were friendly people were there was it just wasn't how it it was portrayed but i knew that anyway before i went you know so i wasn't shocked that you know it was going to be something else you know they, they want to make out like oh black people you know 
people used to be racist to me when I was in England, you know, jump back on the jam jar and all that type of thing. Use a monkeys. I'm just telling you straight. That's what they yeah, used to say. Me. You know what I mean? They used to be quite racist, not quite very racist, you know. Um, and I went to school predominantly white area. So when I went to Africa, etc., you know, there was a lot of black people, but that was the same as being in the Caribbean. So you just felt comfortable and so forth. But, you know, nobody um, made us feel like, Anyway, just feel, but you, you feel like home, right? Like, about, coming, about, coming yeah, that's the... what I said. I felt like I, we just felt home. Nobody's like, you know, everybody was open arms. Everybody couldn't do enough for you. You know, anything you need, it was there. You just felt at home. You just knew before you even got off the plane. Even my son, you know, he went there as like a, a young, like teenager. Like my, he even said it. You know, he was smiling for the whole time he was there. He looked happy. Happy, happy, happy. When he's here in Birmingham, I'm sorry to say, even though he does his music, he gets his good stuff and he does his job, he don't look happy. He just looks like... That's, that's, what I feel like, that's yeah. the problem we black people don't yeah. understand because yeah. we all scream like we want justice, we want this, but there is like yeah. a place for us to feel like yeah. home. We don't even have to force ourselves to exactly. feel good. And then exactly. I feel like we are just, I don't know why, like... It doesn't take nothing. You just go and then see for yourself. Why That's do right. black people are so scared to go to Africa, especially the, the one who are born here? We have internet. There's so many information. I'm glad like people like you are out there. I think yeah. you really have to talk to people because for somebody who's from Africa, when you talk to those people, they don't really connect. But for somebody who's from Birmingham, yeah. and especially from the Caribbean, if you go to Africa and then when you come back, you, you connect, not just go and stay to Africa. You connect with the people that stay Exactly. It really help, especially if we can be in touch with like all the. I know there's a lot of movement going on for everybody want to be pro black, whatever. But it's good to be pro black, but you have to connect to Africa because Africa is our identity. That's so I'm right. really glad that you actually thinking that way. So and then you went there, you love it there. So what do you? Because I know, like I saw one of your video. I think you are thinking more about. Because last time I spoke to you, I think you're thinking more about doing like business in Africa. So yes. what make you? Do you think there's a port? Because I know a lot of people, they were like, okay, Africa is good, yeah, whatever, natural. But do you think there's an opportunity for people who are not from Africa, I mean, who are not born in Africa, who are, have nothing to do with Africa, who just the only connection just because they're black? Do you think there's any opportunity for black people that live in a, like in the UK, going to Africa? Do you think there's an opportunity for them? Or is it kind of scary? Definitely. No, definitely important. Now, what I'm going to say is what we need to get back to is what our people used to do before our ancestors. We used to work together and so yeah. forth. Now, what I believe in, people need to humble themselves because I did observe that people from the diaspora sometimes feel that they probably can go in a certain way and be a certain, like how they would be in the, the UK. At the end of the day, you're new to somewhere. You have to learn the culture. You have to learn the rules. You have to be open to things. And they forget that we learn to be here as well. The way we live, thank you. We wasn't like okay, we, maybe we'll be born here, but our ancestor when they come here, they learn to live the life that they live here. It's not exactly. even the way our way of living. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I feel that as well. What what we can do is, example, then a lot of young people are complaining that they cannot get on the property ladder in the UK. Now I'm thinking, okay, some of them will buy these designer bags, designer shoes, whatever it might be. Now, if they all, instead of buying that PlayStation, is it five that's coming out or foolishness that's happening? Sorry to say, sorry to say that. They could all put their money together and so forth and buy a piece of land in whether it be Gambia, Ghana, Zimbabwe, Uganda, wherever it could be. And they could have that piece of land. A few years time, they could flip that piece of land and so forth. But I don't really want them to be flipping the pieces of land, to be fair. I want them to be keeping it for legacy, building, well, yeah. you know what I mean? And, you know, investing and bringing their skills, you know, they can get into it. There's so many business ideas. When I was there, I, I've got about 50, 60 different business ideas. I can't do them all. But what I'm trying to say, anything that's here, you can do there and so forth. But as you say, it's about working together you know i was saying to somebody else and um, what i love in um, africa is there could be a lady selling her um products here and there could be a sister selling their products next door to her and nobody's saying nothing that everybody's supporting each other and they're just doing their thing but here in the uk i think that sometimes some of the community not all are getting the like western ways in relation to they don't want to share the think that that person's doing what they're doing but at home in africa and at home in the caribbean it don't matter you could be doing the same thing and we all just as long as everybody's eating you know and we need to get back to that that's what i believe 
and I just feel that you know as I said there's a lot of business, business opportunities and everybody in Africa is entrepreneurial even if they've yeah. got a corporate job they're doing something else or you know, you've grown you grown up around it you know even like somebody was saying to me oh Cheryl I can't believe you might get back into you know into agriculture and things like that I said well why not that's the ancestors where the money you, is. yeah the, the, agri uh, the ancestors that's what you know they used to do they used to um, work the lands sell the products uh, and you know just live with the fresh organic food you know you know my mom um passed away from breast cancer and so forth and you know when she was 44 years old so i see things different to a lot of people and that's why i will take the risk and think why what's wrong with going home why why because life is very short you're here for one minute you're gone the next you know what I mean? So, what, what, what are we here? One thing I am blessed with, I'm glad I took both of my children back home. So, if they want to do that in the future, they know about Africa, they know. That's you know another I mean? thing as well. I think it's very important for people to, even if you're not thinking about going to Africa for business or to live there, you have to as a, like at least travel there bring your kids go on holiday there's many That's countries right. in Africa I'm not going to talk about because people like going to like South Africa when people go to South Africa I don't really class it as those country because South Africa is very westernized as well so it's like you know the when you go to country like Ghana Nigeria and you're yes. really going to see the real face of Africa That's but many right. people they don't do that people prefer to go to Spain to go to Germany to go to France yeah. but well, just that's well, crap. I, well, I can I can relate with that because to be fair, years ago I was meant to go to Cape Verde and some other countries, and I didn't go. And um, you know, at the end of that, I was too busy going around to Dubai and traveling to Canada, going here, going there, and that's foolishness. But at the end of the day, I'm glad that you know before you know my time ends, my children have gone home and they can see, they love it, they they know there's opportunities there and so forth. And as I told you straight, my son was very happy smiling everything about the way his mindset changed when he was there and mm. back here now i can just see him back like, mm. you yeah. know at the end I'm, I'm being i'm being honest i'm sorry to yeah say. i get it i get I'm, it like, i'm just it's, it's you know good. what i mean in africa like um you know the thing about africa people always smile people always yes. happy yes. people there's a lot of things going on in africa we don't want to lie there's like the thing about africa is like a lot of politicians they don't run the country do there's a lot of corruption as well but oh, yeah. if you are smart if you can if you have like a good like the thing about living in the west the good thing about it here we have a lot of information we have a lot of opportunity to actually to to have knowledge so when we go to africa the fact we have so much thing in mind in terms of business is mm -hmm. easier for us than people actually who are living in africa so for us when we go there we have like a fresh mind for business we see like you, when you went to africa you see opportunity everywhere yes. the people that live in africa some of them they don't see that because they are born in our environment. So for us today, if we go back to Africa, of course, you're gonna build a lot of things. And talking about the land as well. Yes. Yesterday, I was talking to one of my friends about the land here. And what happened is one of her, um, her grandma actually died. She have like a big house. And I was asking her like, you know what? But she have, she live in France. She have a big house. She died now. So her house gonna save the kids. She's telling me like, no, the house not gonna save the kids. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, the kid have to buy the house to the bank for them to own the house. I was like, I don't understand it. So it was her house. She passed away. She bought it. The kids cannot even have the house because you have to pay the money to the government and to have the house back. Some, some things like that. And this is the thing about Africa, because when you got your land, your land is actually yours. Yes, there is no right. such a thing as, as long as it's yours, like even if you're not here anymore, the kid's going to have it. Nobody's going to come there to ask you for money or whatever. So the land is very important. It's, it's like easy for us. It's not even like really that expensive as well. Yeah, and just go yeah. there. Go yeah, and you make sure that they do the legals to make. Of course, sure you have to do the legal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, to make sure that it says that you, you know, your children or whatever can renew it, renew the yeah, different yeah, stuff yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like you say, it's like you know, it, it's it's yours, isn't it? But it's yeah. like it's like even here, um, in the UK and so forth. You know, people can purchase land and so forth, but. Like you say, if they don't put the certain things in place, the government can get it. Yeah. But, but why are we not thinking about building home? Why are we thinking about just staying here? Like I said, some of the young people are knocking their heads on their, uh, you know, hands and saying, oh, I can't get on the property ladder. Think outside the box. But then again, you know what? 
we we as the next generation and even the older generation we're to blame because maybe we haven't educated the children enough to think okay even if you don't want to go back or whatever you could do this you could invest here you, mm. people there's technology you know people send me all the time every day my Ghana and friends show me different land different opportunities different things virtually you don't have to go as long as you've got good pe good people on the, on the um, ground to support you and um, help you with the transition you know you can do that you don't have to go but I would suggest go I would say go because you wouldn't probably want to come back anyway <laughs> so um, are you planning to go there for good actually to live there yes yes I am I am but I've got as I said I've got two children so you know at the moment I am in the, in the mix of sorting all that out as well because you know you have to obviously make sure that everybody's happy with everything and I'm going to be sh um, showing all that journey on Chiril Talks Africa because um, one thing I'm going to say to you is um, in relation to children um, particularly my daughter because she's under 18 you know her dad has to sign to say that she can go and so forth and different things so there's a lot of different legals and different things that go on and so forth so which is interesting you know i mean it's very very interesting and you know i can't wait to showcase it and more but definitely i'm not going to stay here i'm not saying you can't come and go and so forth but no my 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 biggest plan is not the uk at all definitely not what do you love the most <laughs> of africa just being yourself being free peace peaceful people are peaceful just basically being amongst them um, you know your own people and everybody's just like you know I just i just i just i just love i just love like that you got your organic food i just love that i'm around my people i just love that it's not what everybody used to say it is and when in africa you actually forget that you're actually black because there's no such thing as <laughs> being black because everybody's black anyway like most exactly. people it's exactly. like yeah you know it's nobody just... not like you say nobody really nobody's like bothered about that but one thing um i really do love about being an african so forth is just learning the, the the way the things the ways and the culture that you know the ancestors used to you know embrace and so forth because as i said even though we've lived in the caribbean and you know we are black and so forth and even the foods is similar there's things that we have to learn. So yeah. when I'm there, I there's a like, lot of similarity when you yes. see like Caribbean food and that's African right. food is like, exactly. yeah, maybe just the sourcing is different, but like the way they cook the thing is just the same. Exactly. But what I'm saying is we still have to learn certain things. Like, so what I'm saying is I, I like that, that we, you know, so I love that, you know, I'm actually able to embrace and go back and just like just connect just connect man i just i just love it but like i say some people think i've lost you know i've lost my mind like they'll be, they'll be saying how can you leave i said what do you mean i've lost my mind you've lost your mind staying in the uk if you, you say know. going to la they won't say the same thing you know? oh exactly but i've been to america as well it's not all what like, it's cracked up to be you know at the end of the day but you know at, you know each to their own i'm not going to tell people you know um you know if you want to live in this place or that place but people just need to open their eyes and see as a black person you need to go back to where your roots are from. You can't sprout and develop, you, you know, without knowing where you're from. That's it. And, and, you know, some people might not agree with that. Some people do agree with that. Some people are like, I'm not going here. I'm not going there. Some people don't even want to go to on a plane generally. But I don't understand how you can develop and evolve if you don't know where you're from. That's just me. Yeah. And people I might think... think <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think even, even like going of course there is another thing going same people they don't want to go they want to stay here yeah. but i think even if you stay here we have to acknowledge like africa is actually our land africa right. is like is where we we belong you know That's like right. it's very important for black especially for what is happening right now with the whole black Definitely. matter the discrimination everybody just like there's a lot of frustration in the black community today around the world and we are trying to get together to try to fight racism and to try to find ourselves as well but That's I don't understand right. how we're trying to find ourselves when we don't give so much attention to Africa. It just doesn't make any sense. Because people have been brainwashed up. And, they and like, like we were speaking about earlier, it depends on what family you brought up in and so forth. And maybe, maybe when they're here, even maybe the schooling system, different things like that, maybe people have totally brainwashed. I went to predominantly white schools, right? However, I lived in a black house. So it depends on your own upbringing as well. You know what I mean? It really does. 
Um, like my, my daughter, she goes to a predominantly white school, but she knows she's black. You know, one of the teachers that says to me, she's a lovely girl, even one of her dance teachers, she said, oh, she speaks power and things. She said, oh, she's brilliant. She speaks the Queen's English, but she knows herself as well. She's got to know where you come from. You're black and you've got to be proud that you're I think that's black. how people are going to respect you if you're yeah. race. It's not like there's nothing wrong with like having the worst, worst you know, um, yeah. mentality. It's, you know, we, we live here, we have to yeah. act like people from here. There's nothing wrong with like, you know, life here but just like you have to embrace like your origin where you come from where your parents come even if you're not born in africa you have to learn you know like that, that's, that's right. what you gotta do and that's if right. we accept our identity people gonna respect us more so coming to birmingham are you actually meeting people how is it working are you do you have any like because i see a lot of things you post online are you like yeah. having a group of things or how does yeah. it work well, all before of this COVID thing, I had a plan that we were going to do like um, some meetups and so forth. So I do still do, do, do stuff with women and so forth. So I've been doing that. But at the moment, everything's online because of what's been going on with this pandemic and so forth. So, you know, um, but the thing is, I'll be honest with you, a lot of the people that are in my group, they're not just from Birmingham, to be honest, they're from all over. Um, funny enough, um, a bit probably like your podcast, um, with my Shiro Talks Africa, there's people from all over watching Italy, Ghana, um, Canada, America, Belgium, where else was there? Germany, different places. So to be fair, you know, there's not just um, it's not just people here in Birmingham. Mm. So it's just but but specifically I want to encourage the people from the British diaspora to return and so forth, you know. So, you know, it's just you know the thing is there's people probably from as as i've mentioned europe or even america that might be still encouraged by what we're saying but um specifically i want the people here to think out of the box and think listen let's go home let's yeah. go and have a look i, I think what on. people want more they mo i think we, we have to show a little bit more as you say you're going to do your vlog you have to show yes. Because like there's one thing to talk about and one thing to show what people want to see on social media i think That's the right. thing about africa the media has spent so much money and time to show that bad side of africa in the poverty side of africa yes. i think there is less people that actually yes. really know the the beautiful part of africa where you actually see you know like the the, the, the most beautiful thing that we have like food you have like everything natural that when you buy That's like right. the fruits even eggs in africa when you eat the eggs it doesn't taste the same as the one you eat in england you know definitely That's why people don't know the fruits as well the, the, like you said, I can vouch for that because the eggs were so nice. Everything was just so nice. That's everything. what I'm saying. Like, can you imagine eggs in Africa? <laughs> when you just like fries eggs, when you, it's like it tastes different. But here, exactly. it's not the same. Banana or all the fruit that we have. You eat banana here, you feel like I'm being healthy, but no, because it's not really like you know purely natural. And there's a lot of things that are, I think is very important for people like yourself. So, what is the most like uh, challenging part? Because I know like beside all the beautiful things what is the most challenging thing you think in africa when you are there what is the thing that you feel like i have to add more work me challenge, yeah. me it's, it's to learn the language oh, i'm okay. yeah, yeah for me um my friends have really been good to me and tried to you know help me and so forth and <laughs> That's not i'm easy, trying though. i'm trying to learn the language myself but the thing is with me it's a bit like when i was learning french at school i don't know why i'm good at writing it better than pronunciations so for me it's been imagine trying to like speak um tree with a with a brummy accent you know that yeah. does that doesn't sound good at all so you know they've been teaching me and so forth so i'm working on that so that's one of the most um most um, difficult things for me however you know i'm not going to give up because a lot of the people in africa they're all speaking english some like some people in ghana specifically one of my friends um speaks 32 different languages sorry they told me there's 32 different languages that particular person speaks four different languages and so forth so if me i'm just trying to learn back the mother tongue i've got to get i've got to get it together you know what i mean so yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> i gotta get it gotta get it together yeah you so, will i think you just have yeah. to hang out with people that actually speak the the language and you'll be yeah. fine well that's what i've been doing i've been uh i've been i've been doing that and they said next time i'm back in ghana no more um no more english they're just speaking to me yeah, Ghanaian, and that's just a, I've got to open up my ears, and I'm gonna listen to it, and I'm gonna learn. But um, like one thing that I am, I am like gonna be focusing on, um, you know, was I don't know if you cover this much on your show and so forth. Is actually um, relationships and um, 
the diaspora and you know people back home and so forth because you know i've been hearing so much different stories and so forth what um, do you mean relationship between relations us? relationships dating um relationship love marriage everything the different cultural things and so forth because how things are done home and how things are done say in the uk are totally different on how things are done in the caribbean cultural mm. things you know what I mean? So I'm going to actually um, do a specific series because I was told by a Ghanaian man, Ghana, Ghana men are good in everything we do all. That's what they said. So I need to do a series about this because I need to capture this. And so, yeah. I, I, yes, that's what I got told. So definitely I need to hear. That's you know, a big I need statement. To, well, that was the statement and that was clear. So we have, to, we have to explore this more and so forth. But I don't know what you, you know, you've been hearing about you know on the continent and more about the relationship element but uh, uh, you know the relationship <laughs> element well it depends on what sense because that can be like a very big topic like uh, exactly. they say they better at what like on everything <laughs> yeah but they said yeah. everything they said better everything apparently apparently so let's just i can't but, wait i can't wait to do these live vlogs i really okay. can't they, they only talk about Ghana because africa is big you yeah, are like you know i'm from congo actually the origin of yeah. congo okay. and yeah i can't well i don't know i don't know too much about, i don't know like that's way like that's just men or women just men well man well i've heard women say all sorts of it's because i'm in a group so i have a lot of zimbabwean ladies and all sorts i'm telling you i was telling you this i should actually do like a, um a segment invite you in like you can get yeah you know, think, you know what you need to do, you know need to do? <laughs> when you do these kind of things right you need to add people they don't, not just Ghanaian people you have to have no 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 I am like gonna in, in a Togo, Congolese or whatever. So we're yeah. gonna see how, how they're gonna back it up because that's like a big statement, you know. Yes, but that's what I'm saying. Area. Um when you come to like things like business or whatever, yeah, but when it yeah. comes to like relationship, that's on the topic. Because when you mm -hmm. talk about business, yes. I know Nigerian people they already have yes. they have that hustle mentality, like you know, what I mean they really work hard. And after them, you can pull like Ghanaian people as well. Like West Africa, they have that mentality of working hard and building yes. something. Central right. Africa, they're more into politics and they're very stuck into like a white, like the West mentality because of the colony and everything like that. Okay. So, but when it comes to relationship, <laughs> damn, that's like. <laughs> I gotta yeah, think about it exactly but like what you're saying um, you know business people are doing amazing things all over the continent and you know lifestyle lifestyle can be completely blessed you know the lifestyle you can live there you know you know you could be living like a, in heaven you know what I mean people aren't living in you know in little bushes and so forth That's some people saying. you know what I mean there's a lot of poverty here in the UK you know a lot of unemployed you know unemployment here in the UK yes there's unemployment back home but here as well the way they make it seem as if there's nothing like that going on and you know even in the pandemic you know they put people up didn't they into hotels and then as soon as it's over they've kicked them back out on the street and so forth so there's things happening here and we need to just don't not be brainwashed and people need to go and visit take a trip save mm. your pennies and make it happen <laughs> i think it's the right opportunity now like life here in the west here like things are moving really bad right now i think it's the time to right. just give you a try you know like now many countries if you travel to devon for a holiday yeah there's a virus everywhere i think africa is today is one of the safest places to be that's right you know? that's right you should that's, actually do that that's right but like you were saying um you know about the congo and so forth as well i've, um, I've heard a lot of people saying that they're investing over there as well and yeah. um, i'm returning um, there's quite a few ladies um in my group that i'm in um they're doing a lot of things out there as well i think um you can everything everybody's really everybody's on it at the doing. moment yeah, it's like so i have a lot of really friends happy. now when i when i see the facebook i even feel guilty i'm like oh my god what i'm doing here is like because <laughs> like there is a lot i think it's very hard when you spend a lot of time here to go to Africa and do things. But what you can do, for me, I always say to myself, even if I don't live to Africa, yes. I want to do something for Africa. I want to be even like in between going to Africa and coming back here. That's yes. like an easy life. You have a little bit of here, a little bit of Africa, and you just enjoy life, you know. At, at least you are giving something there. And then when you're there, you just... Because when you go to Africa, what I realized, the last time I went to Africa was, I think, about four years ago, something like that and you feel like you just reset your body just feel relaxed and when you come back mm -hmm. you are fresh and you have new idea you just want to go and just you know, know. Like, that's that's what we need it's like yeah. therapy without really having somebody to talk to 
That's yeah. right. That's right. And like you say, four years. So listen, you need to be uh, planning the trip as well. Come on. Yeah. Like you said, four years. But you know what? Everything, nothing before time it's time. Quick when you hear. That's what I'm time saying. Quick. That's it, the thing. It, it does, it does, it does, it does. But you know what? It's going to happen. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you say, it's going to happen. But I do believe there's going to be a lot of people making moves now and um, making things happen. And it, you have to do, as you say, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time. Forget, like, as you say, Spain or wherever else yeah, people are going. We yeah, we, we're gonna... investing more because people say, oh, well, Africa is too expensive to go. Yeah, but Africa is expensive to go because in, go to Spain is not expensive because everybody want to go to Spain. That's the reason why they can't afford to have like cheap, cheap flight. But if yes. nobody's really going to Africa for a holiday and coming yes. back, how do you expect things to go low? And that's the reason why as well. I exactly. think we, yeah, go ahead. I think people make excuses as well because I've seen flights with 300 and something pounds, you know yeah. what I mean? And, you know, if they save, like, you know, stop going to say, um, buy Nando's or uh, whatever, the buy McDonald's or whatever it is and, and, and add that up over a year or so forth, there's your flight money. You know what I mean? So I think it's really about being disciplined. If people don't want to, like, say, example, I'm just making up saying Nando's or whatever it is. You know, you've got to be prepared to give something up. Or if you're not prepared to give something up, then are you going to be prepared to have, get, you know, get an extra job or start an extra business to make it happen? So mm. that's what I'm saying is what, what are you prepared to do? You know, back in the day, people used to say, oh, my gosh, I can't believe how much you work. Um, yeah, I had four jobs. Yeah, because I've got things to do. Can't be just sitting down, can I? Mm. You know what I mean? But some people wouldn't do that. Mm. You know what I mean? Some people, yeah. they're not. I think it's very, it's very good too. But what about, do you have any confrontation when you claim to be like, you see yourself as African, when you're around like people from Caribbean, do you, you, you have like, how do you back it up? Because I know like same people, they're like, oh, you know, you know, from there or whatever. Do you have any confrontation as well? Does it happen to you? No, the other people, somebody says to me recently, they go to me, oh, you're saying that you're African and everything, but, are they even going to accept you? Are they going to even accept you though? That's what somebody said to me. And I said, well, there's not, I said, this is what I said back. There's nothing to accept because I'm African regardless. So what's there to I'm accept? Saying. That's there's what I said. That's what I said. And this, and they just went, they just said, mm, like that to me. That's what they said to me. Because they what, what they don't understand is what, if somebody see you in Africa today, yeah. because like, let's say you go to Congo, you go yeah. to Ghana, what the first people are gonna say they're gonna see that like, you look different yeah. and That's because right. there's it's very sunny day in africa but people are living in africa their skin a yeah. little bit more like and shiny and more like yes. yeah yeah but the thing is the way you sound certain things that you're gonna do they're gonna make us they're gonna make them feel like you know what she come from somewhere else but they're not That's gonna right. say you know africa they're gonna say oh what country what part of africa are you from that's right that's, that's what right. they're gonna say they don't want to say like or they, they might say you, you used to live in england or whatever but they're not gonna in their mind they don't want to say you know from africa that's well i'll be difference. honest with you what they do say to me you know what people do say to me when they see yeah. me they say i'm from east africa they ask me these these are the place i'm gonna tell you where they ask me where i'm from they say senegal as well they don't i haven't had anybody said uh, senegal you know what they've yeah. said to me they've said to me um are you Kenyan? Yeah. Are you are you Ethiopian? Are you um what was the other one? Did somebody say to me? Oh, have you got some kind of half Somalian or something? Somalian, I, I can see because the Somalian I'm a cheap here. cheap yeah. bones or something. That's what that's what they asked me, and I, and I, and I said, well, I haven't done the test yet, but I said uh, my family are Caribbean, so I've, I've heard it's West African kind of thing. But um, I said I said you know, but we have this sort of time will tell or if I do yeah. the test or not. I don't yeah. know if I'm gonna do that. Did this is exactly yeah, but the thing is, this is exactly what I was saying because people are gonna say where you're from, but they, yeah. but they, they're gonna assume that like, in their mind you're black anyway. They're gonna they don't wanna yeah. say you're not African. That's yes. what people here they don't understand. It's like when you're yes. Africa, it's not such a thing as whoop, being welcome or whatever. You're black, we all the same, so this is our land, right? Yeah. But it's like like me today, I'm Congolese, but my future, the way I look, people always think I'm from Senegal because I have the, maybe I think one of my great dad or whatever. I believe we have some connection there, but like yeah. it's what it is. I think all black people, if you see each other, you mm. can actually tell what part of because when I see your face, your features, you look more like somebody from the uh, I think it's a uh, East Africa, right? It's not yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that, those countries like Somalia and uh, you know like th those countries because you have like uh, yeah. that's sure like we actually come from the same place yeah. but I think we need to have that conversation more even if people don't travel but if, what you're doing is very good you just have to expand it and 
we ha- we need to start having this conversation, you know, it's people true, like but, you and yeah. it's true. But can I just went to something that you just said about how we look? Okay, so my son, when we went to Ghana, then for instance, they say he can pass as being Ghanaian because he's dark black. Hmm. He's got very beautiful skin, dark skin, black skin, but he, and so forth. So you see, out of black people, doesn't matter the different complexions. You, that's my son, and I'm, I look like this. He doesn't look nothing like that to me. Yeah. I've got a daughter, she's a little bit different complexion to me, a little bit different text shade, but we're all black. So yeah. he can come out looking like anything, ancestors. It do, it that, that's what I'm saying, yeah, because yeah. We, yeah, we all from the same, I mean, we, exactly. it, it's, like, it's like white people, you have a lot of white people, like they, they have like this, the, the tone skin is different. When you see like people, you see a French person and they looks different than like, you know, like a British girl, the British, they're a little bit more pale. And you see like uh, people from uh, Poland, they look different. That's right. they look more like tan, tan you know like tan skin so it's the yes. same as africa like when you see That's people right. with like dark skin like strong dark skin most of them are from like ghana you know mm-hmm. even when i see black people even by the way they look the you know physique i can tell what part of africa they're from that's but right <laughs> that's just the beauty of diversity but at the end of the day we all from the same yes. place you know that's but right we need that's to right. have that conversation definitely um, so yeah so what is your biggest goal right now because i know you're working on many things you know what do you want to achieve okay the biggest goal five year just plan. first yeah go on. listen to go me ahead. five-year plan okay i'm gonna build that house yeah with my pool they say to me all the time cheryl you're too much oh you're too much yes yeah, so even though i'm not going to be going in the pool probably much okay i want to build a house um with the pool and I want to start multiple businesses so that I can create multiple jobs. So I've got some ideas that um, are in the infancy at the moment. Um, and I really want to do, um, I want to do, I used to do an entrepreneurship program for children in the UK. I want to do an edition of um, that program um, in Africa and so forth. And I want to do um, a branch out of my ladies programs as well in um, Africa as well because there is so much entrepreneurial talent there and I feel that some of us over here could invest um, you know some sponsorships and so forth to help some people do some amazing things so yeah that's what I we have do. a lot of knowledge here it's time to you know yes. to go where yes. they actually deserve people need our service yes um yeah I mean that's that's very good and, yes. and, it's very, and yeah, go I didn't say and I want to um make some kind of resort you this is this is like this is like um heart of the press because nobody knows mm. i want i want to make some kind of resort and so forth i've got my ideas because i used to have a, um, a child care <laughs> center and so forth so i've got some ideas and some innovation that i'm actually looking into at the moment and so forth so i'm excited about that because that could create so much opportunity so many jobs and so many um new things as well so i've got some my eyes on a few things oh, that's very good <laughs> yeah. do you have any like um what, what what can i say are you what kind of people you are looking for if today people are actually want to reach you like what kind of people you're looking for today well we're looking for like-minded people people that are actually um open to wanting to return to the motherland people that are looking okay not just people who are looking to live i'm looking for people that would like to actually um to like just travel back home because what it is as well what i'm doing is i've been connecting a lot of people that i've met in different countries so for instance i might have more connections say in ghana but there's people that i know that might want to do something in say uganda or something else so it's about actually passing on the connections and so forth and helping people back home as well um you know create something so for instance then somebody i knew recently they they they're into the health business and so forth they want to start something down in ghana so i linked them up with somebody down there somebody i actually met in the um the the high commission in ghana and so forth so not in ghana sorry in the uk um and she's actually there at the moment but um somebody that i know is into construction and so forth so they were helping her look for some land and so forth they didn't like charge her nothing they just looked over things for her and she's good she's down there at the moment making decisions so it's just about connecting and you know everybody just coming together people that are looking to that are, that are passionate about building the motherland together and like you said people that are actually not going to be just talking or negative but you know yeah. one thing i am going to say is i'm looking for people that are not just talkers mm-hmm. i'm looking for people that are actually action preneur yeah. well even if you're not an entrepreneur but you know i'm looking for people that are into actionpreneurship 
because like if you're going to be an entrepreneur you can't be just sitting there chatting about it you got to do something yeah. like the last time i went there i'm not talking since i've come back I i've been on it i don't care if it's a pandemic there's things going on behind the scenes and so forth so what i'm saying is even if they just want to travel people that are, are actually wanting to do something not just talking are ready to make things happen because what we're waiting for what are we waiting for? <laughs> this is it. The time is now to invest. So for somebody, actually, I know a lot of people watching this. Yeah. For somebody, especially from, because uh, I'm not model my friend, I'll do that for him. He's actually from the Caribbean. Okay. He say, I'm tired of England, you know, like yeah. I really want to go, you know, like whatever. For someone like him, yeah. he's yes. here, he was born here in Birmingham yes. as well. And then he's like, like he, he want to go to Africa, but he don't know where, he don't know nothing about Africa. Someone like him is very smart. He's like, he loves business. He okay. loves investing in things. He tried many times here. But for someone like him, actually, we, we just fed up of the way we actually live here because of all the stress. So what can you tell him, like, to kind of boost him, you know? Okay. Well, most countries, right, have got, like, a diaspora community there haven't they yeah. so for instance then if say he wanted to go to okay give an example i'm just going to say gambia right yeah. at the moment because there's a lot of people there right so for instance if he's going to go to gambia contact the people that are in gambia the diaspora see what people are doing arrange a trip connect with people go and talk to people um go and find out about people on the ground are doing you know find out what 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 pitfalls they've had so that you don't have to go through the same challenges at the end of the day what's the point in us all going through the same um headache you know if say you're in ghana or somewhere like that you know it's good to connect with somebody that's down there do some partnerships see how you can work together but like you said he's from here so first of all i would say get the map out do some research and think which country do I want to go to? Yeah, you can't even go and, on holiday. You yeah, know. go on holiday first. Yeah. Go and check it out. See what you like and then make it happen from there. But like I say, you can speak to me, you can speak to anybody, you know. There's loads of people out there. There's loads of people like yourself doing um, channels. You can speak to you. You could hook him up in the Congo, you yeah, know. Sure. You like, like you said, he's your friend at the end of the day. Maybe you guys could arrange a trip. And maybe you can go and show him the shite. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Maybe look, look. Actually, let's just turn this around. You just said your friend is interested. In, is very smart. Blah blah blah. Yeah. You're from you're from uh, the Congo. Yeah. Why can't you like do something together? Put your heads together. Yeah, that, that's true. I think it's just like um, <laughs> as I said to you, is like it's easier for some. Like oh, look, I'm from Congo. I'm French, yes. but I was born in Russia. Okay. Well, oh, I, okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, um, it's just difficult. Like I was this born in good. Russia. I was Whoa. born in Russia, and I'm French, but I'm actually from Congo also because I, I was raised in Congo, and then we moved back, and then I end up here. Okay. But for people like like myself, the fact that I see myself a lot as Congolese because I am, yes. is like I have a connection with Africa. Africa is like it's not like I'm trying to find Africa. I'm trying to, it's That's not the right. same as you actually. Africa is yes. just part of who I am. You know, yes. it's like when I go to Africa, I go see family, whatever. Yes. But the thing is when we talk to people that are born here mm -hmm. about Africa, the way they get a message is not going to be the same as somebody who is born in England, who is okay. going back to Africa. You today, the reason I ask you, because the fact you you purely for Birmingham and the yeah. fact you actually from the Caribbean as well. Yes. So when you're going to say something that we have more power because there is no fear because you not even have no contact with people in Africa like, like now you even want to learn the language as well. So the yeah. testem the testimony like coming from you yeah, is gonna be more powerful. That's why what you're doing today is very good and then you need to meet a lot of people and because many people want to do that but people just have no clue that you're scared but oh you you go to Africa easy because that's your place you have parent there you have family everything is set up for you. So, yeah, but you know, but what, I have my part as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but there's a lot of like, um, you know, people might think that there's not infrastructure in Africa. Like, there's like, you know, how we have like the Chamber of Commerce here. He wants to yeah. do business. There's places like that in Africa. You know, I mean, he can go and speak to the Chamber in Africa. He can go and speak to the, the, the you know, the diplomats in Africa. There's, there's loads of things going on, loads of entrepreneurial conferences, loads. Mm. But you know what? He needs the come on, come on. I, you know, I don't know what his name oh, is. He did, his name no, is Jermaine. I'm not. No, come on, come on, Jermaine. Jermaine. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's so many. There's Jermaine, so you, many yeah. you know what? All right, then if you want to start, like even you know, like like as you said, like a, um, a starting point. You know, go to Gambia, go to Ghana. All right, all right then. I'm saying Gambia then, because you don't yeah. even need to get a visa. You could go to um, you know Tanzania. You could go there. There's like loads of different places you can go to but i'm not gonna say go to egypt i want you to go to like 
you know, well, Egypt's good as well. It's, it's good nice. for history, just yeah, history. to see things. But yeah, I know yeah, it, that's yeah, what I always say yeah, to people. Yeah. When people say I want to go to South Africa, I'm like, yes, you can yeah. go there to see things. But yeah. if you really want to experience the deep side of Africa where yeah. the culture still the way it was. Like, yeah. you know, Gambia, Ghana, Congo, you know, Nigeria, all those countries is, yeah. is very... Yeah. Okay, but you know what I'm going to say to you, friend, and anyone else is watching, I forgot to say this, a main point. When I went to Ghana the, earlier on in the year, I didn't go with anybody except for myself and my children because I was waiting for people to come and people are just procrastinating. I can't wait. I've got things to do. I went as a woman on my own. I've got oh. some, I've got some um, people I know there, yeah, but I took up my two children and I went on, my, on myself and I was safe. Nobody's troubling me. Nobody's interfering with me. Yes, they might say, hello, my sister, blah, 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 blah. You don't, nobody's doing anything. When you go to Jamaica, I'm sorry to say, or, you know, if you go to St. Kitts and Nevis, they are troubling you. They want to like to touch, touch, no, touch, don't touch. That's yeah. one, th you know what I mean? And the talk foolishness, I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry to say that I'm just talking how I find. You know, you know what I mean? You know, they do say things in Africa, you know what I mean? They, they do say, try to say sweetness as well. However, what I'm saying is, I went on my own. So come on, Jermaine. Come on. Jermaine, come on. Can I'm myself. It. I'm and he's from Birmingham as well. So yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm my ones with my two children. And I was fine. And okay. I felt safe. So, like I say, everybody just make it happen. No excuses, you know. No All right. Excuses. So, people actually want to get in touch with you. How can okay. they do? Like, that's the best okay. part. Okay. Well, my 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 Instagram got cloned the other day, which is unfortunate. oh yeah, I saw the post actually. I don't know why people. Which is, very, un which is unfortunate. It's terrible. But I'm gonna start a new one. It's um, at Cheryl Talks Africa on Instagram. Because you you're not on Instagram for the moment, right? Because I wanted to tell um, you on Instagram. I am. I'm, I, I am on it, but I haven't started um, collating the stuff on it, which I'm, okay. I, I was meant to be doing that this weekend. That's one of my tasks to do. So I am on it. So you can tag me on it. It's at Cheryl Talks Africa. Yeah. You can get me um, on facebook as well in that group um let's talk africa 2020 and beyond yeah and just myself sure fuller on um, facebook and so forth but like i say we'll have a lot of other new things coming soon and so forth and thank you that's good and there's anything else you want to say before we we finish we wrap it up i just want to say like you know thanking you for giving me the opportunity to come on here and i just want to say to you know the brothers the sisters you know the young people listening and so forth don't be brainwashed by the media as you know you've heard here i am from birmingham uk you know i was born and bred here you know as i said i've not seen anything more beautiful than in the motherlands you just feel at peace don't let anybody you know change your mindset go through it go and experience it when you've experienced it then you can say you don't like something until then don't 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 just listen to the system you know what I mean? And another thing I was going to say before I go, there are other communities right now investing heavily, heavily in the motherland, in the continent. Preach. And we are sitting there waiting. You know, I was there. I seen Chinese people. I didn't see many Indian people, but I've been Chinese told. Chinese people yeah, yeah, I've been told there is. There's a lot of Lebanese people as well and other ethnicities. You know, there's a lot of diversity, you know, they're, they're, you know, their children are in the international schools on the continent and having a very blessed life. And, you know, they're investing heavily. And, you know, why, why are we allowing this to happen? And I'm not saying, you know, not to allow other ethnicity. ethnicity People see opportunity, they, they go where, yeah, whatever they are. There's yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with it. Like. Exactly. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, look, we're just there sitting on the sideline. Forget the sideline. Get involved in the game. You know what I mean? You know, and it's not a game. This is our heritage. This is our roots. These are our ancestors. Go and get to know yourself. You know, as I said, you know, you know, parents that are on here as well, we need to educate our children. You know what I mean? As, as a mom, as I said, if God took me out today, you know, I'm, I'm blessed because I've taken my children home and I can sleep easy. They know. Yeah. They know where they're from. I've, they've seen where the ancestors were taken from. They've seen different things. You know, as I said, don't be brainwashed and just make it happen and you can do it make Damn, sure you make nice. sure you you know put your plan in place forget them starbucks coffees or whatever it is you're having but the thing is if you like starbucks you can build your own starbucks there thank that's you that's what people don't think about that's the you thing can't be the, you can't even create your own name it's gonna be like the brand that you're gonna fit like building the whole africa in africa there's so much everything that you feel like we don't have it there 
just think about that's the, that's why you call it a business plan because that here is. if you want to build another starbucks here it's gonna be tough for you because they already have the market but that's in africa right. like country like congo can you imagine like congo right mm -hmm. in the capital they only have like two cinema i'm talking okay. the whole city so can wow. you imagine you invest with country like that you have a cinema you're gonna be like make a lot of money that's, that's why right. we people don't see like there's a lot of opportunity for us that's why you see a lot of chinese people going there they invest right. because they see the money and before we finish what do you think about what akon is doing oh amazing amazing i love it i said i've said to my friends already we've got to go there we've got to go there but to be fair my friend patu you know she's from gambia she's been inviting me to um senegal and um Gambia for a long time and so forth. I am, I'll be there. Trust me on that one. To be fair, I wanted to go to Kenya as well, you know, before. Kenya is beautiful. Um, on my, on my next trip, but um, at the moment with what's going on with the borders, that's not going to happen at the moment. I think I've just got to, I've got to just uh, stay focused at the moment, which is a shame, but you know what? Things will happen. Things will happen. <laughs> and shout out to Naomi as well. I think you told me that yes, you know her. So yes, We yes, had a good Naomi. conversation. It was yes. very good. You know, what yes. she's doing is very good, man. Yes. I'm happy. It's weird. Just like I have two people from Birmingham. Yes. I didn't know. I didn't know her before. I just found yes. her online. She happened to be from Birmingham and I got you as well. I was like, what's wrong it's with Birmingham? It's true. Well, to be fair, I remember when Naomi used to be doing her vlogs and so forth. Well, it wasn't like um, a channel, but it was like on a, 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 a Facebook, I think about a year ago or so. And she was um, in Ghana. I think she was in the mall. Mm. Um, and I said, you know, we're typing away and whatever. But like I said to you, how I actually know Naomi and one of our aunties, um, her mom, her mom, her mom was friends with them. Um, one of my um, aunties and so forth, and that's what I'm saying is like we were all brought up in Birmingham. However, we're going back. We, you know, we we just we just don't want to be here. We, you know, we've grown up here, and you can see the oppression that's happened and so forth. And gonna make it happen. Gonna make yeah, it happen. Gotta make yeah, it happen. As, and like you say, um, you know, Naomi's doing some amazing things out there in Tanzania and so forth. And, yeah. you know, I love watching the journey and it's so good. forth. She's posting picture. Yeah. is actually make you want to go there. What she's posting yeah. as, ah, you know. Exactly. You need exactly. Energy. Exactly. And, you know, as, as like what you're saying as well, it's like to show that it's more, Africa is more than just what people are saying. There's so much out there. Why would, why would like two Birmingham women be telling you or, you know, come on pack your stuff and go if it's not good come yeah. on it, it, it is good it is it is excellent and you need to get in the game and make it happen <laughs> that's good so um so for you guys who are watching today, so Cheryl, she's actually, she's in Birmingham for the moment. If you guys want to get in touch with her, I'm going to pull everything, all information that she actually have, you know, to get in touch with her. Make sure after that, you just give me the link. I'm going to put on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook, you. everything. If you guys want to get in touch with her, just don't be shy. Just, you know, just <laughs> drop her a message and then she's going to give you all the information as well. Yeah. I really appreciate having you today. And I hope I'm going to have you next time as well when your business is actually going to grow. But don't remember when you're going to have your show about the Gambi. I think the, the guy was saying about relationship <laughs> things. Make sure you yeah. add me there because I got some say as well. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so keep doing what you're doing. I think we really need a lot of people like you. As I said to you, I know you're doing business there, but having a conversation is very good. You have to tell people we need to accept that we are african first that's right so we, we get, we are. before you think about your heritage you are you you're gonna have your heritage because you are from the family so we need to that's accept right. that so keep doing what you're doing and then keep the energy and that's yeah i right. wish you a lot of luck, good luck and everything all right i'll be gone soon i'll be gone yeah. soon yeah, that's cool. we're still you. gonna be in touch maybe <laughs> no definitely something, right? no yeah, yeah. what i mean by it, what i mean by that i'll be gone soon what i mean by that is like in terms of i'll be showing the journey and so forth. oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's sure yeah, that's sure yeah. that you get you yeah. get a show you get we need more sure beautiful <laughs> pictures in africa you know we need more and next definitely. time i'm going to africa i'm gonna record the real stuff you know like because what last time i went to africa the only thing yeah. i was recording was just food because i was crazy about the food well, you gotta take it because food is life <laughs> yeah, food is like, oh my god food is just life but this time actually yeah go ahead i'm gonna and i've got an advantage because i'm looking all skinny and everything they all want to feed me so i can have double portions you know yeah, man. They'll be like, african <laughs> food tastes so nice you know like, i know just, here is easy to diet but in africa just like man like food is just something else so exactly. thank you for having you today no, i'm gonna thank tag you, you and when everything is ready i'm gonna let you know as well all right okay no problem thank you so thank much thank you and you have a nice time you have a blessed time and i'll catch you catch you all. thank you take care good night